and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Chinelo Anene, and I am joined by our amazing co-anchors tonight. Like, oh, I'll say our Monday tonic. <laughs> when Anoma has joined us today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jola. Hi, Anoma. How are you doing? I'm good. How has your week started off? Mm. <laughs> mm. And Jola gave the <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> Well, I want to just give it thumbs up. I, I want it. to see progress in my week. Yeah. I have so much to deliver on. God help me. Amen. But yes, <laughs> I'm very positive. Okay, we needed that bit of positivity because yeah. I mean, I was having a conversation with Yola earlier in the makeup room, and we we're just talking about how everything just seems like. <sighs> but yeah, we move, Abby. We push through. Let's keep pushing. Yeah. Let's keep pushing. <laughs> Okay, so to further our conversation on good governance and in partnership with Enough is Enough, we present to you, drum roll, the Office of the Citizen mm. Chatbot. I think this is a very interesting um, development. So apparently there's now a WhatsApp chatbot provided by the Office of Citizen from Enough is Enough where you can actually um, send a message. Yeah. You send, send a message, just say hi to a particular number. I'm going to call out the number and then you would get feedback um, based off on whatever it is you're looking for. So the number to reach out to is uh, 017006381. Okay, and to um, go further with that, um, so the chat box provides you, um, you know, the opportunity to engage and um, you... It, the first thing you need to do is just to say hi, you know, so there's um, almost like an AI, you know, someone just waiting to walk you through the whole process. Um, it, um, you'll probably register, you know, put your name. It gives you options on what you may want to learn about, um, maybe about elected public servants, BBC information, you know, against the next um, election cycle, debates on town hall. So more like there's actually now no excuse to say that um, you do not know what is going on. Now, it also goes further to say that it allows you the opportunity to, you know, um, press, you know, maybe one. Like, so, for example, if you press one, it, um, it gives you the names of all elected um, public servants and any other appointments that may, any other positions that may be that are not um, elected positions, it also gives you all that details so you know that these are appointed and then these are elected and um, it also gives you the opportunity to lend your voice to whatever civil action is um, ongoing so there is, again, it is a platform for you to engage you know, the government and be politically aware Yeah, absolutely and I love it because yeah. um, it's got a lot of information mm -hmm. and it's helping citizens to become aware yeah. and to be responsible mm -hmm. for the people they elect, the yeah. people that are there, put them on their toes, yeah. keep them accountable mm -hmm. to what they said they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So take, for example, when you, you the, the numbers to like chat with, mm -hmm. so in case you put in three, for example, mm -hmm. you're going to have... Uh, so when you select three, you're going to have options drop for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So you can get information as much as like your elected, yeah, like Jola said, your elected public servants and um, the officers, what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So that when you're asking questions, you, you know, know you send you messages, you're saying, you said you're in charge of yeah. this area, this local government, yeah. but I can see that maybe the gutters are not yeah. working, yeah. The, the drainage is bad, is... What are you doing about that? Mm -hmm. So you, somehow you're keeping them informed. Mm -hmm. And there's also that aspect where in the main menu where it says RSVP. Now that was particularly, uh, what's the word? Novel. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> RSVP in Nigeria, yeah. we know what it is. Yeah. Rice yeah. has yeah. very plenty. <laughs> but now they've mm -hmm. been able to coin out you know, this uh, acronym for registering, mm -hmm. yeah. select, mm -hmm. vote, and... Uh, and protect yeah. your sit yeah. protect citizens, protect your environment, mm. protect your community by holding your leaders accountable. And um, enough is enough believes in the intrinsic value of debates as a mechanism to deepen democratic ideas 
and, ha and um, they have hosted or co-hosted a lot of debates that continue to keep people in the know. I think this is really, really taking the bull by the horn. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. no longer you waiting for opportunities where, oh, okay, they have failed us again. Mm -hmm. You are now being proactive. Yeah. And they have taken that step to bring it even closer yeah. to the citizens having that awareness that you can, you have the responsibility yeah. to make the government work, work for, for you. you. Yeah. So I think it's a, a really amazing one. All the information is there. You can also know who is contesting yeah. at any particular time. Go read up their profile, ask them questions mm -hmm. if there are debates that mm -hmm. come up, mm -hmm. and then you're able to engage them constructively. So really, I mean, it's fantastic because now everybody's going to be on their toes. Mm -hmm. It's no longer business as usual yeah. where you just come and you just bamboozle <laughs> the people, say one thing or the other. Now people are coming ready for you, firing yeah. questions that you have to be ready to answer yeah. if you want to lead. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so again, the number to reach out to is plus two three four one seven zero zero six three eight one plus two three four one seven zero zero six three eight one. Remember, all you just need to do is to send hi on WhatsApp and then you follow the prompts yeah. from there. So here's what we found as today's quotes: Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has, and this is by Margaret Mead, which is very true, actually. A small group of people is all you need. You don't need, you don't, they, they mean, they don't need a crowd. See three of us sitting yeah. on this table right now. We can take certain decisions yeah. and by the time we bring in other people, it's just going to spiral mm, and, then, absolutely. Yeah, and then skyrocket. We all know the popular saying that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. However, leadership and good governance comes with preparedness. So today we're discussing good governance and the responsibilities of the youth. But first, let's take a break to see what we found in the news. You are still watching Waze. World Hemophilia Day is celebrated every year on April 17th to honor the birth anniversary of Frank Schnabel, who established the World Federation of Hemophilia. The purpose of this day is to raise awareness and provide information about hemophilia and other bleeding disorders. Hemophilia is a rare medical condition where the blood fails to clot correctly due to the lack of specific clotting factors. This leads to prolonged bleeding, which can be hazardous and life-threatening in some situations. Ha! World hemophilia. I mean, this reminds me of how I actually lost a friend of mine. Mm. Oh. She had a blood clotting. Yeah. Oh. Problem, and then that was how we actually lost her. And I don't know. Well, according to what we heard after she passed, um, it was said that there were some tests that were supposed to be carried out before the surgery was performed mm. on her, and then they didn't carry out the proper mm. test. So negligent. On the part of the medical practitioners. So. I think it's a good one again, bringing mm. awareness. awareness yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so many, there's so much information that we don't have at the tip of our fingers. So, and these days, when they're celebrated, it just brings you yeah. remembering the That's, fact that you remembered mm -hmm, your mm -hmm, your friend. Mm -hmm. Now you're a little bit more informed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, it just helps people to be more aware and to take care of themselves more mm -hmm. especially days when it's medically inclined mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. then you know that oh there are certain things because i'm sure there are things that cause the blood clots yeah. and um, maybe hemorrhage so things that people can look out for so if they see the signs they might be in a better position to advise and say you know what That's maybe okay. you should see a doctor or things like that yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Jala, what did you find in the news today? Okay, so um, Malaya wins Kogi PDP governorship ticket. Interesting. <laughs> wow. So, I um, mean, former senator representing Kogi West, Dino Malaya, has emerged as governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party, set for November 11 governorship election in the state. He polled 313 votes to defeat his closest rival, Jabiru Usman, who polled 127 votes. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. interesting. Time, I've been seeing the drama between himself <laughs> and Yesen and Biki. And every time I sit I'm just like, this There is guy. something else. <laughs> this guy. So, I mean, congratulations yeah. to him. We'll wait till the 11th of November. Yeah. And they will know the true verdict. Mm -hmm. yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Norma, what did you find for us in yours? Okay, well, 
I unfortunately am going to be a bearer of good news, or is it bad news actually? Because Nigeria records 1,336 cholera cases mm. and 79 people yeah. have died oh. from cholera. So the story goes that the Nigerian Center for Disease Control has announced the total of 1,336 suspected cases of cholera, including 79 deaths so far mm. in 2023. And that's a little bit alarming lot, yeah. because this is something that it's not paid attention to at yeah. all. You mean if it was like Ebola mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like... Um, um, COVID, COVID mm -hmm. uh, everybody would be on the but yeah. this yeah. is silently killing people mm -hmm. and uh, it's seasonal for some reason during the raining season mm -hmm. that's what, and it's just due to poor sanitation yeah. Yeah. these yeah. bacteria only breeds around when there's of, of course yeah. pools of water yeah. here of and course. there yeah. so it's um, it's really sad because uh, the report revealed that 12 states across um, 43 local government areas have reported uh, cases and the case fatality ratio of 5.9%. Mm. Mm. And the states that have been affected are Abia, Bauchi, Bayelsa, Cross River, Eboi, Kano, Katsina, Niger, Ondo, Oshun, Sokoto, and Zamfara State. Mm. It's, um, it's really alarming. I think uh, that we really need to pay attention mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. It's not something that people really look into, but I think it's something that we need to... I think sanitation, mm -hmm. it's important that we do something at the government level, at the Indi community level, level yeah. at individual yeah. level. Yeah. People yeah. need to upgrade in the area of hygiene so that mm -hmm. we can tackle this once and for all. Because mm -hmm. it's something that if we really deal with it, it can go away yeah. forever. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I was going to say that the mm -hmm. cholera isn't something that, you know, stays if we actually tackle yeah. it to it fizzle can, out yeah, at some point. Yeah. 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 Okay, so from my end, um, I neck buzz Adamawa <laughs> REC from office. I saw this one and I was like, okay. The Independent National Electoral Commission has directed that the Adamawa State Resident Electoral Commissioner, who do REC, to stay away from the state office. The directive was contained in a mem memo signed by the secretary to the commission and it was sent to him today. He read, I hereby convey the commission's decision that you, resident electoral commissioner Adamawa State, should stay away from the commission's office in Adamawa State immediately until further notice. And it was said that he was served this memo because he declared the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Aisha Dahiru, popularly known as Binani, as the winner of the Saturday polls in the states, even before the conclusion of the process. Hmm. And so that's why he has oh, why? therefore been barred. But that's a from good the step in the right now. direction. Yeah, actually, I mean, it is. I'm happy that know. I mean, I mean, they took this step. Yeah, but yeah. I just wish that INEC would, would work when they are supposed to work. I, but then let's not go into let's not let's not let's not start that conversation. Okay, so we'll take a break, and then when we come back, we'll be discussing that conversation for tonight. See you after the break. <laughs> 